everyone welcome in this video i'm gonna show you my visual studio 2019 setup and let's go ahead and jump straight into it let's go into extensions and manage extensions and the first thing that i want to do is i want to go online and i want to type in command and i want to install the com open command line extension and what this will do is this will allow me to open the command line anywhere i want within my solution it's a really convenient way to access the command line and really so if you need to execute any commands you can do so next thing let's go ahead and type in add file and this extension is just uh, makes it a, a little bit in, in some cases it makes it a lot easier to create a file in some cases the what visual studio provides is a little bit easier for the templates visual studio for just regular files this add new file extension is beautiful i'm going to show you how to use it as well uh, next thing that I want is the comment toggle. So uh, commenting and uh, uncommenting in uh, Visual Studio is, I'd say, is good enough. But this just takes it a step a step further, and uh, you just have one key bind for commenting and uncommenting, and it's just that one extra step of convenience. Next thing, uh, not really uh, required, but it's still nice to have the Markdown editor. Uh, Visual Studio doesn't have support for Markdown files. I don't know why. But if you happen to write markdown files, this is a very nice way to go ahead and preview your markdown. The next thing will be the bundler and minifier. So this is just something that you, if you're building a website that's like small and you just you don't want to set up webpack or anything like that, this is a really nice way to just right click minify my uh, JS and uh, CSS and it just does it for you. And it becomes a task as well, so you don't. It will do it on build, okay? So it's a very nice uh, way to do it. And next, uh, we will type in image, and it's the image optimizer. So if you have downloaded some images or something like that, and uh, you want to use them on your website, uh, this will go ahead and uh, compress the the images so they will take up less space. So it's a very nice little thing to have as well. All right. So this will be it for my uh, extensions. Let's go ahead and restart Visual Studio and let them install. Okay, so after installing the extensions, let's go ahead and showcase them. The first thing that I would like to showcase is the add the new file. So the keyboard shortcut is added for you, and I quite like this keyboard shortcut. It's pretty nice. It's the new empty file, Shift.f2. So if we need to create something, we just press Shift.f2. And that will create the file for us. We can also do something like uh, uh, create them in nested folders. So let's say I want www root, and it will be my JS folder, and I want my main.js file. Okay, and it will create the two folders for you. So sometimes when you need a quick and uh, easy way to just create something, you know, you can click wherever you want, shift shift F two, and new.js and you know you got the file you're there and uh, sometimes it works a little bit faster than uh, the current visual studio Control shift f2 you gotta find it where where is the uh, too many files already i can't see the javascript oh there it was but yeah you get the point sometimes you know the extension you know what you want and it's it just rolls off your keyboard a little bit easier so next thing is the command line so visual studio doesn't have a good command line uh, i don't know why uh, if I let's say I want to open a command line while I'm in a file, I want to open it wherever it is, and I want to just quickly get and save something, exit, and uh, you know I'm I'm back here. If let's say I want to open it somewhere else, I go ahead to this main.js and I'm in that folder. Uh, so the navigation works either from the file that you're at, or from what's it called from the solution explorer wherever you click. And pre press Alt Space, and uh, that just opens the command line for you. And whatever you need to do, do it. .NET Restore and T Framework mar migrations. Uh, get if you have some other command line tools, generate stuff. I don't know optimization. You just open it, and it's there. And the next thing is Common Toggle. So let's go ahead, grab this, and what I will do is hold down Control and slash forward, and there we go. So Really, just one place for your uh, for commenting and uncommenting instead of pressing 
control K, control C, and then control K, control U. It's like, you know, it's a, a bit too much movement when you can just go bop and that's it instead of bop bop. You know, nice, nice little convenient thing to have. So next thing, let's say we want to read me.md. So we have a markdown file and this is what we get with the, what's it called? Um, with the markdown editor. So if you are working for an organization and, uh, you know, you have you actually have markdown files because you're mature and uh, you want people to know things about your project. Uh, you essentially you write markdown files for your projects, okay? And this gives you a, a preview of what it's gonna look like. If you don't know what markdown files look like, and you know, uh, so you can like first, second, and uh, really the editing is already it, it helps you basically with the syntax as well a little bit. So that's what the markdown file extension does for you. Next thing is the image optimizer. So let's go ahead and I'll just copy an image and uh, hopefully uh, we can see how it looks like. So if I have an image, I can right click on it. And uh, at the bottom, I have the option for image optimizer. And let's just optimize for best compression. Okay, so at the bottom here, it's you can see it's taken 17 seconds and uh, around a million of uh, pixels. So let's see what it actually looks like in terms of uh, file bytes. So let me open this here. So it's two megabytes here. And after you op optimized it, it is 384 kilobytes, right? So again, if you just have big images and you're working on a, on a what's it called, on some project and you just want to quickly optimize the images, this is, uh, you know, this is your go-to, this is your bread and butter. Next thing again, main.js let's just create a variable lol equals uh, hello world and, uh, and then let's just say console log lol and let's say this logs this message and uh, then let's say log it this log it eh, doesn't really matter but yeah uh, so, all right, we have this main.js. Let's go ahead and just say, go to bundler and minifier, minifier, and let's just minify this file. So it's going to end up in the same folder. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. And you can see that it just removed all the space and uh, the comments as well, right? So it's not your full-on uglifier, but if you don't have too much ja JavaScript and you still, you just want that quick optimization, you know, the feeling that, at least you've done something. You get this bundle config.js, and this is what the mapping of uh, bundling essentially uh, looks like. So let's say I will make a new folder, CSS, and I will say 1.css, and in here I will create a second file as well, 2.css, and let's say we will uh, a bundler minify, minify file, uh, there it is, and now let's minify the second one. So if we minify the second one, we get the second option. So what I would actually like to do is say main min .css. So this what will what this will do is it will help me to separate my CSS files into different uh, files. But then once I output uh, the minifier, it will only go to one file. So let's say. I and I'll just say color pink, and uh, here I'll say hello and color blue. Okay, so I'm pretty sure on save. Yeah, there you go. We have our main main uh, .css, so I don't have to build the two, the two files every time I save the files or build the. It will basically again. It will remove all the comments. It will remove the spaces, and I'm gonna end up with my bundled um, CSS. So really basic uh, extensions that are used for development, but they do come very in handy for the quick tasks, for the tasks that, you know, take time and really fine graining. Those are gonna take uh, forever anyway. So another thing I'd like for my Visual Studio is to help me clean up my code. So let's say the formatting is all messed up. We got a space here, we got a space here. We got, you know, a tab here, we got these unused using statements. 
and then let's say we have stuff like uh, startup and uh, let's create a not a prop but rather a private string message and we'll set this message to uh, hello world and uh, so you can see this uh, advice to make this uh, read only and uh, just this stuff so i'd like it i'd like visual studio to help me clean this up and the Visual Studio 2019 comes with a code cleaner, but the key bind is unfortunately Control K, Control E, and the code formatter is Control K, Control D. Like, what are they thinking, right? So I'm gonna opt in for the Visual Studio code a key bind, a Shift Alt F, and I think that's the key bind that was in Eclipse as well in the Java uh, Java editor. So that's what I want to use. Uh, usually, when I want to format my code, I always set it to Shift uh, Shift Alt F, and uh, any editor that I use. So let's go ahead into Options, into the keyboard section, and let's go ahead and type in Cleanup. Okay, so we want to select Editor uh, Cleanup. I don't want the custom. I want the default code cleanup. Editor Context Menus, File Health Indicator, Run Default Code Cleanup. And I'm just going to go ahead, Shift, Alt, F, Assign, OK. And generally what I tend to do, I don't want to click on this little sweeper button, right? Look at how small it is. I'll miss it all the time. But let's go ahead, Configure Code Cleanup. And what I'll do is you can add whatever you like here. But for me, it's really I'm just going to add the Make Private Fields Read Only when possible. That's all I want to do. So now if I press Shift, Alt, F, Gonna make this read only, remove the end use using statements, fix up the spacing, and really you don't need anything more. So yeah, uh really just make it a little bit nicer. The other thing that I like to do, and I do do this a lot if I have multiple windows open, I wanna take this one, I'm gonna be like dragging it over on this square, and that's just like two seconds of my life wasted. And seeing as I code a lot, I want to, you know, not waste at least like a, a day or two of my life. So basically what we do is we go into tools, again options, and we want to trigger an option called uh, uh, split vertically or window.new vertical tab group. And what I like to bind it to is control alt arrow to the right. It will turn up as control alt plus dot, but I really orientate by the arrow by basically telling me move it to the right. And that's what I'm going to do. So do that and now when i open the program i can control alt and move it to the right straight away and now i have my windows side by side and from there on it's easy going but yeah this will be it for this video if you find it helpful leave a like subscribe share if you have any other smart keyboard shortcuts or extensions that you're using that help your productivity please make sure to leave a comment and share it with everybody else but for now thanks for watching have a good day and hopefully I'll see you in my other videos.